Testing, testing. JB here, JB here. Hope everybody's doing outstanding. March 19th, 2024. Just one second. I'm just going to get on really quick. It's been a while. About 250 here. Got about an hour and 10 minutes to the close. Just going to talk a little bit about some of those GLP1 names. The VKTXs, the turns, maybe some GPCR. Talk a little bit about Carlytics. Got some calls after their earnings on Friday. Big big name I've followed for quite some time. Looks like uh, it's come down from <clears throat> over. I got to check back what the, when it was over 100, but it's, it's been pummeled. And I think the most recent earnings plus some updates is going to send it over 20 bucks. I'll talk a little bit about WW. Um, possibly chewy after the close tomorrow. And uh, and then talk about the markets. And I, I guess at f first I'll start with uh, with the markets. So so the the spy I've been talking about five twelve fifty and five oh four is kind of support resistance over the last week or so. Uh, once the spy broke five twelve fifty this this morning, it just took off at eleven thirty. It's sitting here at uh, five fifteen thirty on on the spy. And I have to check back. I think it's a couple days ago. If we close up here, I think it's another all time high close. So. It's not the highest it's been, but it'll be an all-time high close. So we'll have to see how this all plays out. Some of it was the video yesterday, the hype, uh, their developer con conference. And it seems every time they've had an event over the last three years, they've had massive moves. The difference between this one and the previous ones is the video has added a trillion dollars in market valuation in just the last three months. So a lot of that hype and expectations have been baked into the stock. So I thought there was a possibility of some type of sell the news event. I've put it on the watch list uh, on Monday, and I, you know, I keep putting it on the watch list. And I think at some point there's going to be a greed reset in that sector. But anyway, so Nvidia helped push the S and P uh, above that level, and then tomorrow's the Fed. So we have um, Powell's going to do. They're going to keep rates the same unless there's any kind of surprise, and I think that would be a shock to markets if there was a rate cut or a rate hike. And then it's how he's going to tiptoe the line on the most recent inflation data, which has been a little, a tad higher than expected. Is it just a short-term blip or is it going to be a trend? So we'll have to see how he, he kind of plays that because it seems he's been saying that they're going to push rate cuts into the fall. Expectations have been dropping that there's, I think it's still 50% there's going to be a rate cut in June. At least that's what the market is expecting. But if any kind of hawkish talk could spook markets a little bit and you know we close here at five over 515 again looking to 512.50 as support if we break through that then 504 if things get crazy tomorrow but be interesting the what he has to say and i think that'll be the big topic there and uh, i mean a statement matters as well um outside of that there's not much tomorrow after close there's chewy earnings um and uh let's see here sorry <laughs> i'm just looking at stuff while i'm doing it so that's that on the market. So new highs typically beget new highs. So the, it's it's uh, once the, the skies have been broken, we broke through those clouds like an airplane. Once you break through the clouds, it's a lot easier to get higher. There's a lot less resistance. You know, at some point we'll have some some pullback. But for now, you know, if, the, if he comes in in line with expectations or maybe even a little dovish, the spot could probably get to 520 by the week's end. So that's that on, on the overall market. Uh, taking a look at the GLP-1 names, uh, Viking Therapeutics, VKTX, will report oral data at some point before the end of the quarter. So that means before the, the end of March, which is only a couple weeks. So um, you see some option action on the April April 2nd, April 5th. I forget which strike they are. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but folks are April 5th, 90s and 100s. And they're not even spreads. They're straight up. It was hard to tell if they sold the hundreds to buy the nineties or vice versa, um, but uh, a lot of let's see, there's eighteen thousand calls, nineteen thousand calls today versus six thousand puts. But you have to think based on what happened with uh, N NVO, they had their uh, oral data come out. Was it last week or the week week before? And it gained thirty billion dollars in market valuation just on positive oral data. Um, and it's a similar study, right? Um, the Viking oral data, I think it's still just phase one. So if Viking comes out with a with positive oral data as well, if it's in line, the same or, or better than NVO, you have to think it's going to trade into the low well, 120s, 130s, if not higher. And then you're going to have the buyout premium as 
the bets start to increase that one of these GLP-1 names are going to get acquired. Also, you had um, Madrigal, MDGL. They finally got approved the first NASH solution uh, by the FDA. Uh, was it last Friday or the Friday? I think it was last Friday. The stock actually reversed course because there's still this, I wouldn't call it the stigma, but their uh, GLP-1 drugs are supposedly going to be a solution for, for NASH. So it's a 50-50, but it's a huge market, and they're, they're going to be the first in the market. But I think, again, similar VKTX has a NASH solution as well. So um, that's kind of a bonus. It's like you're getting the GLP-1 drug of VKTX plus the bonus of a possible NASH solution just like MDGL. But I think that all just bodes well for the sector, and that's why I continue to look for opportunities to, to add calls on some of those names in the space, like like Turn Pharmaceuticals. So Turn Pharmaceuticals, I have the April 10s. At some point, I'll look to get some, some later strikes. That one is sold off. It's a very divisive name, and the, the, the issue with it, they don't have that out into the second half of 2024. They also have an oral solution, and some there's some concern that it's not going to be as good as some of the other competitors that are out there. But if it's even in line, you have to think it's it's a $500 million company. It has 240 or $260 million in cash. When you're an early stage company, you're just burning through the cash. So cash is a big is a big factor. But they just had their earnings last week, and they said that there's a runway to at least 2026 with their cash. They won't have to do an offering, so they won't have to worry about that. And then you have to think that these companies are going to start getting more buyout premium, especially if a buyout occurs in the space. You have to think a name like Turn is going to be 15 bucks or, or higher if there's any kind of buyout. And who knows if Turn's going to be a buyout candidate. Um, similar GPCR, they've they've had data, but their their data has not been as good as VKTX's. Um, but the, the space is so big that even if it's not as good a, a, a product for folks, at least it's another option. Um, so that's why I continue to like GPCR and uh, Alt, Altimune. So Altimune, there was a huge short piece saying that they're never going to come to markets. Uh, the company has some shady uh, corporate leadership and things like that. But that's just another name, inexpensive name to, to play for upside if there's any, any buyouts or more positive data on, on the horizon. So those are kind of, you see me write on the watch list and talk about a lot, some of the thought process around why I look at those names. And I think there's just a huge opportunity for, for not only a buyout, but then positive data could send all the names in that space higher. And similarly, you saw when MVO had the positive oral data, VKTX sold off, which kind of mind boggling to me, but uh, so we'll have to see how that all plays out. So those are the GLP-1 names. Um, so, so Cardlytics, so just to get in the, the meat and potatoes of Cardlytics, if you've followed the site for a while and I've had it as one of my top five stocks many years ago, um, it's just a great, um, great company. It, it's, it's, people compare it to Groupon, but I think it couldn't be further from the truth. It's an intermediary for banks and, uh, it's, uh, and retailers and travel uh, companies and, and things like that where you see those promotions and when you log into your bank, your credit card, where it shows use your credit card at Target and you save five dollars off, or Walmart save ten dollars off, or you get a you know twenty dollar credit. That's Cardlytics, and uh, what's the good thing about Cardlytics? They have, and they just posted an update again. They they know fifty percent of all transactions that happen in the United States, Cardlytics has line of sight to, which is just remarkable. So not only are they a data company, but then they can tailor the advertisements to to people, so that they don't have. They don't have the ability to see the individual items that are purchased at, at with when somebody does the swipe, but they can say, "Hey, you spent fifty dollars at Target every every week," and then they can they and then they maybe they can see that the the spending goes up when they have coupons that are redeemed, things like that, and then they're able to offer a return on investment for the bank side. So the banks, the, they're the middleman. So the the banks pay Cardlytics, the retailer pays Cardlytics. There's a there's a cut. Um, and they can promise return on investment for the bank and the retailer. So it's a win-win. Um, so I, I just think it's a great company. They finally start to return to growth. COVID hurt them a lot when a lot of their businesses, restaurants, uh, retailers, and then travel, hotels, uh, things like that, it, it took a big hit. So they, they returned to growth. And then they just announced on the, the day of the earnings they got Amex. And back when I used to do my rants on Cardlytics, Amex is the prime uh, rewards program, right? So when you when you log into your, 
your Amex account, you have all those offers. You click select, this is the offer this month, and they're usually very lucrative offers. Carlytics is going to run that now. So I don't know what the financials of that look like. Are they just trying to get into the, the door of Amex? But I think that was the huge, some of the biggest reason why the stock really took off after earnings. Um, sold off yesterday. Oh, was it yesterday? Yeah. They announced an offering. 50, well, they announced a possible offering, almost like a shelf offering for $50 million. And then after the close or near the close, they did a filing saying that $50 million offering was done. It's like 2 million shares at twelve eighty. Um, I think that's a good thing, right? You're a publicly traded company. The job of the capital markets, if you're a publicly traded company, is to have access to capital. So especially with the stock being $8 last week, and now here it is up at four, thirteen, fourteen. It makes sense. Why, why not just raise a little cash, give a little cushion, um, things like that. So that's Carlytics. Really, I think, and I use the analogy with Tree, Lending Tree. Lending Tree got demolished. It used to be a $400 stock all the way down. I think it went down to $10. And here it, it traded up to 45 or so. It's come back a little bit. But similar story, It's it got hit with COVID. Um, a lot of competing competitors, although Carlytics doesn't really have a competitor. Um, and then... They start to turn the corner, and then once that happened, the, st the stock took off to forty-five bucks. And lastly, with Carlytics, you have a an ins well, not an insider. You have a fund or a hedge fund manager, Cl Clifford Sosin, his name is, who's been gobbling up shares. He was gobbling shares up in the fifties, sixties, eighties. It dropped all the way down to, to eight bucks. I think he sold just a couple thirty-five thousand shares or so, so at seven or eight bucks. And then he came out with a filing. He he added nine more million, a um, nine million dollars in. In shares between March 15th and March 18th at $13 and change. He's a big believer. I saw one of his interviews years ago where he talked about Carlytics. And I have to think this is the start of a, a move back into the 20s, 30s, and beyond. So that's my rant on Carlytics. I'm not going to talk too much about WW. Uh, just d disappointing to say the least in their recent earnings. Uh, lowered guidance again. And then you had the big news of Oprah Winf Winfrey leaving the board, donating her shares. Um, it just was not a good, not a good look. It almost said, "Wow, she's jumping ship." But on the flip side, she wasn't really jumping ship. She's getting into the GLP one boom, and she's she doesn't want to be in a position where she will be questioned about her her interest to have a conflict of interest. Being on the board of Weight Watchers, of course, she's going to want to see Weight Watchers do well. If she's a holder and she's on the board, and she doesn't want to have to worry about if she's on uh, Ozempic or Wagovi or, or, or any of those. So she kind of took herself out of that uh, so there wouldn't be an issue. Um, and then she clarified that. I watched a little bit of a clip last night. I wasn't going to watch the whole thing. But she had the uh, CEO of, of Weight Watchers was sitting in the front row and she talked to her for about five minutes and explained her reasoning behind the, the selling the shares and uh, leaving the board. So... I, you know, I went and you know, I got the May strikes. I'm, I'm probably just going to hold for now. I, I hate to use the, the phrase, never wrong, just early. But if I'm early, I don't want to be not in, a, not in a position to take advantage of a move to the upside. So uh, I'll continue to look for opportunities there, but I'll probably wait until it really starts to break out. So that's WW. Um, and then so, you know, Broadcom and um, hang on a second, folks. <clears throat> just trying to pull up where it's at right now. Yeah, so uh, n names like Broadcom, Land Research, um, even Micron, but Micron reports this week. Names that I think will have sympathy moves if we have some kind of greed reset in the, in the space. And uh, Broadcom already sold off on earnings, even though their earnings weren't too bad. Um, but the stock just broke the 50-day moving average today, and it would close right at the 50-day yesterday. Um, the 50 days at 1240. So I think if it doesn't break 1240 today, I still think it offers a decent risk reward. The thing is, if we have a gap down or, uh, you know, something like that, it's going to be very hard to get a decent put hedge. So uh, I took some small position yesterday. I took a little small position today. I probably should have sold some of my uh, 1120s when they were solidly green and just held the, the 1090s. But I'll just hold what I have for now. They serve a purpose of having a hedge. Because if we do get some kind of reversal, I think those are, that's a good spot to, you know, to find some decent premiums. Because the premiums are insane. If you want to try and play, you know, SMCI, it's insanity. Yeah, you'd have to be very quick on the trigger, and that's not how I trade. I'm not someone who who scalps 
uh, positions. That's just not, this is not how I've ever traded. So I'm not, that's not, that's not my wheelhouse, I guess you would say. But um, that's kind of the thought process on why I continue to look for those names for, <clears throat> for, for puts, because at some point, and you do this long enough, I, you know, all these, I can remember all the different cycles we've been through when people say AI is the next craze. I mean, Web 3.0 was supposed to be the next one last year. Um, and I'm not saying this AI craze is not, doesn't, uh, is not going to continue to bear fruit, but it seems, you know, like I put on the watch list last week or maybe even Monday, the, the fact that NVIDIA has added a trillion dollars in market valuation, you're telling me that the market has been wrong on NVIDIA to the tune of a trillion dollars over the last three months. You know, it's, it's only catching up now. Like that just doesn't jive with me. And Apple did the same thing a long time ago where it took off and this is pre-split and before all the massive buyouts that it's done. And I remember went on this crazy run and and gained a huge market capitalization. And then a couple of days later, it sold off rapidly. You know, it was like everybody got on the bandwagon, everyone's in the boat. And then it slowly, it was like a snowball. I'm not saying the same thing happens here, but, uh, you know, there's been plenty of times over over the years where you've seen booms. And this is a big boom, obviously. People are saying this is the next big, you know, this is the internet, right? You, you listen to the, if you watch the, the NVIDIA presentation yesterday, you would, I mean, he's pretty good. Uh, um, I, have, I, w- I won't call it a cheerleader, but the way he talks about it, yeah, maybe he's been right so far. Um, but you have some people on the bear side, right? So Jim Chanos, Kanos, whatever, is kind of mocking um, NVIDIA's CEO about his presentation yesterday. And that's what he does, you know. But he did that to Tesla to, to the tune of many percent to the wrong side. But, you know, at some point they'll pull. Unfortunately, the, the couple of times that I'm in those puts, they just, some sometimes they go somewhat in the green and I probably should have pulled the trigger, but I'm not looking for a, a 30% gain. I'm looking to have a hedge that's going to provide 500 or 1,000 percent when we do get some kind of pull. So that's kind of the thought process. Why well, I continue to bang my head against the wall on those. <clears throat> uh, which brings me to Chewy. So Ch- Chewy reports after the close tomorrow that they had their the earnings uh, last quarter. The stock went went crazy. Then they had their investor day, um, and then they announced that they're getting into the pe- pet healthcare uh, sector. So. Um, ran all the way up to, I think it was 24 bucks. Let's see here. Yeah, 24 and change. And then it's, you know, it's, was it's down 60%, something. I could probably pull it up and see what, what the pullback is. But uh, concerning some of these retailers uh, and what they've done, I have to think Chewy's going to do well. Um, and it's sitting here and it pretty much hit all time lows today. All time lows were at the end of February. You know, I might just look to, and I was looking. Uh, yesterday and the stock just sold off for no reason at the open and then it really couldn't find footing and then today it started off to the downside kind of chopping around here but it's really not doing much to the upsides barely in the green right now so i'll probably just wait till tomorrow if i do look to get some kind of position to play that for for upside um, <coughs> excuse me i think is micron micron's wednesday let's see yeah micron's tomorrow you got a five below um tomorrow morning is oh you got pdd General Mills, um, not much in the way of earnings after that. Um, oh, FedEx, Lulu, Nike. Gosh, I would love to play Lulu to the downside, but that's been, uh, actually, it looks like it's in the downtrend. That's right, it's 50 day, under its 50-day moving average. Uh, that's a tough one, but, you know, I'm going to say I'm not bullish. I'm bullish Chewy as a retailer, but not Lulu. Uh, so that's a tough one. And then FedEx is interesting. I think they were talking, was it FedEx? Amazon was talking about adding them. I don't know. But that one had bad earnings uh, at the end of its its previous quarter. Stock was trading around 280 or so. Huge gap down to 245. It's kind of just chopping around here. So now it's at 250, 256.15. That could be an interesting one. So I think that's it, folks. Uh, you know, I put Netflix as a possible hedge play as well. You take a look at Netflix. It was at the, it was at the top end of its Bollinger Band coming into today. I thought if the market did find some weakness, could be a nice play, maybe the 590 or so. So that's a name I might look at. Don't be surprised. I love Netflix. Netflix, I love the story. But, you know, I mean, you can see since its earnings, it was 480 back at the end of January. Here it is at 6, 619. So those premiums have probably come down quite a bit if you take a look at, <coughs> excuse me, 
a little under the weather as I seem to always be. Uh, yes, five. Yeah, they're, they're kind of expensive. Seems like all the premiums are expensive. Five nineties are fifty-one by fifty-seven. So, could be a nice hedge if if we do get some some selling uh, tomorrow. I think that's it, folks. Uh, thanks for listening. Let's have a great day. Rock and roll.